So what all we got here? <sighs> well, this is my little ready kit box that um, that I use out on you know during retirement or during <clears throat> during uh, or if I'm just gonna be making baits. Uh, just dropped all my zoom split tail trailers out. How about that? That's not cool. Okay, guys, as y'all seen Sunday, a lot of people asked why Wesley Monday. was uh, Monday. Make, well, excuse me, Championship Monday. Uh, a lot of people was wanting to know why he made his spinner baits the day of. So he can give you a little well, 101 on that right here. The reason I make them the day, I, it's not that I make them the day of, it's just the one that I have on that I'm fishing with. After I catch seven, eight fish on it, I'm going to, I'm going to, take those blades off that bait and put them on another blank wire like this blank and the reason i do that is this is thirty thousandths wire it's real super limber and once you bend this i'll show you on this one it's been bent out a couple times but once you bend that thing in and out in and out you catch a fish and it straightens it out a couple times it don't take many times you flexing that wire in and out it's going to break watch it i mean i'm doing this on purpose but You'll bend it. Watch, it'll never break me doing it right here, but this is the old one anyway, so. But once you flex that thing so many times, see, it breaks. So after about, so how many times I bent that in and out? Probably about 20, 15 or 20. So after you catch 10, my, my rule of thumb is 10, depending on how it bends it out. If it straightens it out pretty good or you hit a dock or whatever, you know. If it straights it out good, you bend it back five or six times. That's I'm like I get real leery. So what I do is, is basically all I do is if you've seen it on live, I cut. I take a regular pair of pliers, and what I'll do is I'll cut. I'm not going to do this one because I'm still using this one, but I'll cut right here at this R bend. I just cut it off, and what that does, it leaves me with this portion in my hand. That I've already got made up. And I've already got my spinnerbait made up. And all I'm going to do is slide these from there to here on these. And then bend my wire from my loop, from my, from my swivel on my blade. And here's the things that you got to have for this. I mean, this is you, it, I mean, you don't have to have these. But I keep a pair of spinnerbait pliers in my, hand, in my boat. And what, these are spinnerbait pliers. Those? See, they're round. And the size loop you want, you either... You, it's depending on how big a loop you want you come up the, up the wire like if you want a really big loop you'd come way up in here but I'm gonna build one right quick just to show you this is what I keep in my boat swivels I keep swivels a pack of swivels Can you show me a swivel show us on this, this this is a swivel a sample swivel or uh I think that one maybe that's that one's a sample swivel okay and then and you gotta have beads I like red sometimes I like red beads I, I put a red bead on first put a red bead on my on my spinnerbait first and this bead is to keep your clevis from getting locked up in your r bend there's an r bend right there this bead keeps your clevis from getting up into the r bend now i'm going to show you a clevis this is a clevis this is a clevis that's a clevis all right the clevis is what holds your blade that spins around your wire. And let's just go ahead and make another one up like I've been fishing here at, uh, here at Lake Norman. And you can put this on backwards. You always want to put it in like this. And you want to make sure that that blade is facing, the cup is facing down. It's facing down the wire. Because if you put it with the cup facing up, it won't spin. All right, there we go. We got that. So there you have that. Okay, come on, let me get a good picture of that. And then what I do is I have some... I have some brass beads. Okay. All right. Then the brass beads... If I'm throwing like a tandem, like a Colorado, Indiana which I'm, this is what I'm doing. I like to put four, three to four beads. And these are the same things as the plastic ones. So 
except they're brass. Why don't you get them on? Kind of move your I'm hand so we can get a I'm picture. I'm going to. And the reason you don't want these too far apart because I'm going to show you a trick. This is why I do this. Now, now look here, we're to the part. So you got red bead, three brass beads. Now, this is where these come into play. You're going to grab this wire, and I want my loop fairly decent, and you're going to let this hang out just a little bit on this side of your pliers. And you're going to hold right here against this, and then you're going to roll. Now, you see how pretty of a round bend that makes? Then you're going to take your swivel, and you're going to slide it on here, and this is why you use these round ones. Now, it don't matter where I grab it at, but I'm going to bend this past. I'm going to bend this past my wire. Because this is the, really important. Because if you get too big of a gap between Here, your let roll. Me, let me zoom in on that. You're, you're right. You, you, you can't, if you get too big a gap on that, when you throw it, sometimes your swivel will come off. And these swivels are very, they're not cheap. They're pretty expensive. So, now, I'm going to put one on just like I've been fishing, uh, which is a four. That's a three and a half Colorado and a number four Indiana. Water's a little dingy where I'm fishing. So, and then you're just going to, this is, a lot of people have to have a pair of split ring pliers. We've got 279 people checking this out. This, I don't have to have, and all you're going to do is I take my fingernail and I spread the split ring apart and then I slide the blade on there and you cannot put this one on backwards and there you have it and then I'll put my skirt on I like like when I I like to bend this wire it's, it's pretty much a little bit more straight I like to bend this down where it's more as you can see it's more compact and in line and the reason that you don't want to make too many beads here you will get this too far up and sometimes I like to wind it and twitch it, and when you twitch it, these blades will clang together. It makes noise. So if you get them too far apart, the blades won't hit together. So there it is. It's pretty simple. Put your skirt on it, tie it on, sling it around. Well, put one all the way together. Well, it's the same thing. And you use what, a zoom? What a zoom, use, split a zoom? tail trailer. Uh, I have to get in here to get the skirts out. Here, I'll just put a, I'll put a white skirt on it right quick. What brand of blades are you using? Uh, here's the thing. I don't really have a set particular blades that I use. Uh, these are these blades are from Dave's Tournament Tackle. Uh, I use Hildebrandt's. I like Hildebrandt's a lot. Uh, Stan Sloan blades. They have their own blades. I like Stan Sloan blades. You can order those I, from yeah, uh, FallingWatersOutdoors.com. Yeah, you can uh, build the components from there. Um, I, you know, here's the thing. I, I just... I, I, there's so many different blade combinations. Uh, like, I, I don't know if I see it. Pickens. I throw Pickens blades a little bit. Um, uh, it, it's just different things, different places. I like different blade combinations or different styles of blades. Like, this is a hammered blade. See, it's not smooth. It's hammered. Uh, it throws off a little bit different light refraction. Um, you know, sometimes, like, when you're, when you're in uh, clearer water, that... Uh, that hammered blade it gives a little bit more flash so uh, if I'm in a little cleaner water I'll, I'll, throw, I'll throw a hammered blade instead of just a smooth blade Lonnie DeWitt says thanks for the class you can teach your old dogs new tricks oh whatever uh, where did you get your pliers someone asked uh, I actually bought these I think I may have ordered these on Tackle Warehouse uh, I think it's a do it uh, do it set of pliers. They're about uh, I think they're around 30 bucks or so maybe 40 But and here's the thing you don't want to leave these laying out because they'll get rusted. I've painted these black I've actually painted them one time uh, They rust up a little bit, but I like to just take a piece of sandpaper with get a little rust on sand them off and then paint them back I paint them black with some high high enamel heat paint So okay. these are worth their weight in gold as far as you, you can do it with a regular pair of pliers, but your your uh, your eyelet for your swivel is never it's never like round it's like squared off so but it, it still work I just I don't know I just like my I like my eyes 
nice and round. Hmm. So. Darren Hammond says, thanks for always showing what you're doing and how to do it. John Pullman, do you ever go higher than two blades? Uh, you know, I've never really been a fan of the three blade things. I know a lot of guys throw three blades like when shatter spawning, but man, I've just, I've just, I've never really caught them a lot better than I do with two. So I just kind of stick with two. Rob uh, Rogers says your new name is Clevis, LOL. Thanks for info, very good. Clevis or Clevis? Well, however you want to say Clevis. It. Clevis. Clevis. Excuse me, I'm learning all these terms too. Clevis. It's a Clevis. Devil Tato. That's cool, brother. John, thanks for taking the time for these videos. Uh, Hunter Ridner. Mr. Ridner in the house. Congratulations going back old school with them blades. Do you like a trailer hook? And if you do, do you use one with a split tail trailer? Yes, I use one with a split tail. And here's the thing. I don't like trailer hooks. But today I actually put one on because I was fishing in the place. The thing I don't like about trailer hooks is that if I'm fishing a lot of wood, I don't like a trailer hook because, man, you you stay hung up quite a bit okay. with a trailer hook. All right. Why a 5.8? Eight? Why a 5.8? Mm -hmm. uh, because it's close to a half. I mean, it's uh, one size bigger than a half, and that's exactly... It's, you'll have to ask Lee... It stands slow on why that's a five eighths and not a half because when we designed it, it came out of five eighths. That's a one of Stan Sloan's trademarks is they have a five eighths ounce spinner bait. This is a three eighths. I'll throw a three eighths in shallower water if I'm wanting to, like if I'm fishing two foot or less and I want to keep it up close to the surface, I'm going to use a three eighths. Mm -hmm. I actually have a three eighths tied on right now too, but uh, didn't catch much on it. Which pal rod do you throw a blade on? I throw it on a 755 endurance, uh, 755 CB endurance. Okay. Do you ever throw the orange kicker blade on your spinner bait? Yes, I do. If the water's muddy, I'll throw a. I'll actually even get. I'll get really weird. Like I'll put an orange and a white blade on it at the same time. Like mm -hmm. I'll have my back. My bottom blade will be a white blade. What does the kill on bottom? Of the head do it helps it to run true as you see it's got a keel can you see that okay so it's going to keep it straight it makes it run true and then also when you come up over wood it kicks off good on the wood and does doesn't okay. hang up chris combs says venice redfish thumper that's right venice redfish thumper okay we might have caught a few on that might we mr All right. combs well, we wanted to bring you a little video here because several people had asked about this and we was doing several of our Facebook lives. So we felt like if we did a little tutorial that might clear everything up. You can find these at Tackle Warehouse. You know, the standards. If you want to order blades, uh, fallenwaters.com carries blades. You can order blades there if you want interchangeable. Um, and if you're in the Ray County area, I think Michael Neal at Dayton Boat Docks carry them now. Yes, so, Real uh, Deal Tackle carries them. Yeah, Real Deal Tackle. The uh, Real thanks Deal. Thanks for sharing tips. I met you at the Harvest Archery Shop. Great guy. Good luck. Uh, Jake D's Love. Three Catch Flipping Fury on Kentucky. West shut down production to watch live. Let's see. Uh, Bob McPherson. Awesome. Hello from Lake Cumberland. Love the testimony last year. Daryl Hammonds, good luck tomorrow. Robbie Buckles, congrats again on your win. Charles Stoker, good job, y'all. Thank you. Justin Newell, hashtag Team Zorro. Lonnie DeWitt, good luck tomorrow. Jeremy says, thank you all. Enjoy all your videos. Rick, great stuff, W. Mark Tyree, good luck tomorrow. Mark Cox, great job again. Wes, you the man. Larry Barker, hello from Iowa. Good job on the big win. Garrett says, how do? Uh, Brian Lawrence, is that your design? This spinnerbait? Yes. Yes, it okay. is. Uh, I, I wouldn't say it's my design, but I... I he I'll, named it. You named it. Yeah, I named it. Uh, I named it. Um, you just want to know how the name come about? I'll tell you how the name come about. Uh, what tournament was I in? And I think Chickamauga, wasn't it? I was at Lake Chickamauga and... Uh, at FLW. Yep, and I come in second, and I wanted to say bingo... But somehow it came out A and it ended up saying Bango, and that's just how it stuck, Bango. So that's how I come up with the name for Bango Blade, Bango. Hmm. Okay. Love the video, thanks, Jamie says. Rob says, what pound test do you use mostly? Good luck, uh, Wesley. You know, I, it, right now I'm throwing 16 at uh, Kentucky Lake. I throw 16. 16-pound uh, gamma, gamma uh, edge fluorocarbon. 
Um, I'll go down to 14, and I'm I, sometimes I'll go to 20, depending on if we're fishing like some grass or if we're catching really big fish. Uh, I might go to 20, but most time 16. That's that's pretty much standard. All right. for Someone me. asked where can we find them? You can find them at Tackle Warehouse. TackleWarehouse.com or and or you can uh, FallingWaters.com. Yes, yes, and if you're in the Ray County area, Dayton Boat Docks carry them. Yes. So, the date uh, Shane Hello off. from Clinton, Tennessee. Love, I'll build me one, Wes. Uh, well, do you like a, a split straight tail or split curly tail? I, I, I usually throw a, a, just a split tail trailer, like a zoom split tail. This is it right here. That's what I throw about 99.9% okay. .9 of the time. Okay. And here's the only two colors I carry. I just carry chartreuse pearl and pearl white. That's all I throw. Uh, okay. Bill Laurent says, thank you, Miss Strader. Uh, Tim says, thanks for the insight. I'm going to go ahead and build Just got back one. to Music City. How'd you do today? He's sitting in sixth at the uh, Eastern Bass Open here at Lake Norman. So, uh, we'll see what happens tomorrow. Will you in last flight tomorrow? Yes, I don't wait until 4.15. No, 4.30. Okay. Uh, Dean Rojas brought congratulations on the win at Kentucky Lake Who was West. That? Let's see at Lake Travis. Dean, Dean Rojas. Rojas. Thanks, Dean. Means a lot. Uh, Cooper Atkins says, if you're throwing a bango blade around zebra mussels, do you throw cold polymer line? Uh, usually I don't let my bait get down on the zebra mussels when I'm throwing a spinner bait because usually that means you're around smallmouth and you don't want it down on the bottom anyway. How do you decide between a spinnerbait and a bladed jig, someone asked. You know, here's the thing. It, this is what's going on in the in, in, in the, the world of fishing right now. You, you, I'm not saying you can't catch them on them. I always have a bladed jig. I always have a bladed jig tied on. Always. I mean, because that's one of my favorite things to do is to throw a, a, like a, just a vibrating jig. Um, here's what happens, in my opinion fish start seeing certain baits over and over and over and over again and they feel the vibration they they hear it so it's kind of like you know you live by the interstate and it's always just a roar 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 well how nice would it be if all of a sudden you didn't hear all that roar anymore that's kind of what like what happens in fishing you know certain baits are this may be old school but it ain't thrown a lot anymore so the chatter bait or the bladed jig has taken over and uh, a spinner bait is a pretty effective weapon it's just you know I, I just think it's it's got lost in the mix and but it still catches fish so it's just something different no I ain't gonna say it's something different it's something old that really doesn't get thrown a lot anymore and the fish have gotten to where they're not accustomed to it as much as they used to be and it, it, it's almost like it's new to them so that's why that I, I mean I always have a blade jig tied on if, if I'm around grass, I'm going to be throwing a, a bladed jig more in the grass than I will be the So you're bait. saying it's so ancient that the fish that would have recognized it have done, died, and passed off? Well, their offspring... Would that be a good... good... It, well, what I'm going to say is their offspring have, haven't been tricked into... Uh, <laughs> tricked into biting... Grandpa didn't tell them about it. Yes. Okay, Don, California here. Congratulations on the win. Now win the Open. Right. Ron Wilbanks giving away all the juice. Well, listen, I can give you all the juice you want. If you don't drink it, it don't do no good. Mm -hmm. Ronnie Bailey, do you ever throw a spinnerbait deep, and is it effective? Yes, I do, a lot. Okay, Shane says, is the shad spawn important to your strategy of catching bass in the morning? Go team straighter. Yes, it is. Okay. Frank says, dead on steady. Uh, Grandpa didn't tell them fish about the spinnerbait. Uh, Clinton. Let's see. Need double willow, blue glimmer. Randall Parker, do you catch, do you catch most of your fish on spinner bait than other baits? No, I, I just this is just one of those times of the year where a spinner bait's really effective. Like when you got a shad spawn going on, that it's a really effective bait. It, it I mean it looks like a lot of shad. The flash and the vibration. It just looks like you know those shad trying to spawn together and and what it does is it actually attracts more shad to the spinnerbait and they start 
following your spinner bait. A lot of times when that shad spawn's going along and you start feeling those shad hit your bait, like boom, 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 boom. There's a lot of times you won't even catch a bass unless that unless that's happening. Because what happens is, or you'll be whining and you'll feel it just like, boom, one just hit it and not get it. And what that is is those shad are chasing that spinner bait and spawning with it. And the bass actually comes up and eats the shad that are chasing your spinner bait. So a lot of times that's what you feel, that real big hard thump and you don't hook it. That's what it is. But it's just a way of coaxing those shad up to start spawning with your spinner bait. And the flash draws the bass and he in the vibration he eats the spinner bait. Mm. All right. Well, Does Mark that make Jeffrey sense? says he's glad you did this after the 101 live that Bango Blade's been on fire. So appreciate you doing this. Who's that? Mark Jeffries. Yes, Mark. Hey, Mark. By the way, text me and let me know if that little picture I sent you, if you got that took care of for me. Yeah. All right, guys. We're gonna get off here. I've got supper cooked, so supper. we don't want it to be cold. Supper Wes cooked. is gonna be popping it in the microwave. Um, all right, so like we said earlier, go to Tackle Warehouse. You can order these at Tackle Warehouse online. You can go to fallingwaters.com and order these. You can order blades there as well. And if you're in the Ray County area, support uh, the real deal tackle Michael Neal there at Dayton Boat Dock. I seen where he ordered some the other day, so he's got some on hand if they've not sold out. All right, thanks for watching. And uh, we'll come back with another product in a day or two. We might explain that pH custom lure tomorrow. Tomorrow. That, that'll work. All right. Tune in in the morning for Facebook Live about 5 30. Uh, day two of Blast Off. See you guys then if you're up.